50 years ago, a lucky series of events led to a most remarkable discovery. Eric Wilkinson calls this serendipity. I heard first heard the movement of a small animal in, in wattles by the track. Got the spotlight on it and the hair stood up in the back of my neck when I realised what I was looking at. Wilkinson's rediscovery was the culmination of a search that had captivated and frustrated Victoria's scientific community since the early days of the colony. In 1867, two specimens had come into the National Museum of Victoria from the scrub of the Bass River. The museum's director, Sir Frederick McCoy, described the new species. He named it Gymnobolides leadbeateri, after the museum's taxidermist, John Leadbeater. Once published, the public eagerly awaited more information about this new marsupial, but none were found in the wild, and by the early 20th century, naturalists presumed it extinct. So in 1931, when Charles Brazner, curator of mammals, found a misidentified skin in the collection, which had been received back in 1909, suddenly there was hope. It became Brazner's great quest to find the missing Leadbeater's possum. He even published a plea in 1946 to all good nature lovers to contact him if they saw one, and he would come post haste to record the details for the final chapter of Leadbeater's possum. One of the many who read that popular article was Eric. He was eight years old. Brazner went on to become director of the museum, which saw an end to his field work. And that was where the story seemed to end, until Eric came to work at the museum when he was 22. We'd come up through Warburton, we decided we'd go home through Marysville. And we'd gone about five miles, or eight kilometres, and a night jar flew in front of the car. So I got on to pull up, got out to see if I could find it. Uh, but it had flown off, but then I picked up the eyes of a small possum sitting on the side branch of a mountain ash by the side of the road. And this time there was no doubt. Even at 22 I knew enough to know that there's no point in going off half cocked until I got something definite to show people. Knowing that he had to make his case, Eric went back a few days later to get photographic evidence. Our relief had actually worked, it turned and I was able to get side on photo and then it turned right around and got a photo with the tail. And of course in those days a slide film it took about 10 days to process so there was an anxious wait. I think from my parents it was something along the lines of that's nice dear but <laughs> they couldn't quite share the excitement. Probably, probably more grumping about being disturbed by my coming in the early hours of the morning. I asked Eric how he felt when he went to tell Brazner of his discovery. Well, I suppose a certain amount of uh, trepidation because I was just a lowly assistant in the fossil department, he was the director, and much, much older. Um, but I, I thought I had compelling evidence. He pulled out his 10 by hand lens and held the slides up to the light and looked at them in great detail. And he handed them back with a comment, something along the lines of, I can see why you thought it might have been a little bit as possum, but photos can be so deceptive. Then I got a little lecture on how easy it is to go astray with photos, which was a bit uh, dismaying to me because I already thought that uh, he would have perhaps shared the excitement and said, oh, yes it is. <laughs> but uh, as things turned out, I think he was more convinced than he let on to me because uh, the next thing I knew is a couple of days later, John Coventry said, oh, Charlie's authorised a field trip. When he actually got to finally see a specimen, I got a fairly, fairly grudging, looks as though you were right after all. In November 1961 was the time that I fell in love. I was a naive young chap to ask a girl out on a first date to go and look at a little bit as possible, but that's what I did. So she was duly very impressed. 